and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Kind of, almost. This is the For Your Ears Only podcast, but not as you know it. We are doing our second cocktail special. This is to celebrate the end of the Roger era. Very much like we did with Sean and George, we're doing it for Roger, even though there's not really that many cocktails no. in the Roger movies or books. No. We've found the ones that we can use, we've made some up, and there's a few that we're just going to shoot on yeah. into the episode. We're doing three cocktails each. We have local uh, distilleries who've got involved with the episode. We have Scottish vodkas, we have Scottish gins, we have Scottish rums. And if you stay tuned, you'll see us trying them for the first time. We even have some discount codes for you as well, if you want to try them yourself. So if you could like the episode, share the episode, and do anything else that makes us feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside. Try out the drinks, let us know how you would make it and if they were any good. Yeah, actually, before we go, just pause it, go get a drink, come back, and then enjoy this episode as you're having a wee swally. Cool. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go on to technically the first drink, which is not a cocktail, but it did feature in For Your Eyes Only. Mulled wine. Yes. So, we've had mulled wine on the stove, and we're just going to have a wee bit with some amaretto. Amaretto? Amaretto. Technically the first drink is mulled wine. Yeah. See that. everybody's personality just in the choice of glasses. <laughs> so Laurel Hardy. <laughs> Jack has never tried a shot of amaretto and mulled wine. I only tried it last year and it was actually quite nice. This is also going to be like the palate cleanser throughout the episode. What actually goes into making a mulled wine? Ah, I'm glad you asked, Jack. I don't have a clue. <laughs> I think it's wine and obviously spices. It smells cold. Mmm, tepid. <laughs> right, so this is amaretto. How much is in a shot glass that's kind of like just... 25 mils. Can I ask where, you, where the idea of the Disserano amaretto came from? My mum. Oh, that's cheers. Nice. That's so sweet, yes. Merry Christmas. It's nice, it's easy oh. to drink. Oh, 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 oh he likes that. <laughs> oh, that's good. It's good, isn't it? That is good. Now, we're going to move on to the actual first proper cocktail which Jack is yes. going to do. So what are you making for? us today, Jack. Da, 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 da. The first actual cocktail is going to be called an Americano. Now, I know what you're thinking, isn't that coffee? That's what I thought as well. The Americano was actually in three James Bond novels. It's actually the first ever drink he orders in, like, ever in James Bond. Like Roger Moore, where he has it in Paris during A View to a Kill. So this is an Americano. Okay, so we're ready to make the Americano. First of all, I want to say that the garnish is orange wedges, which gets put in, so I'm gonna put that in first because that's the fun part. Now, has anyone ever cut an orange before? Can we also remember that? Are you addressing the glass? <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice knife, a nice orange. Right, okay, so two high ball, high ball glasses? I think that's what they're called, yes. Okay. Oh, that is orangey. There's no ice in the glass. So we're going to go... What do you need? Can you pass me the Campari, please? Yes, you can have Campari. Right, okay, so here we go. No close-ups this time because that went poorly the first time round. Oh, well poured. That was almost perfect. Right, assistant, can you pass me the sweet vermouth? From Amazon, other places are available. So this is sweet vermouth. Right, again, it's equal parts, so... That's basically the two big alcohols in it. And you're just going to top it up with soda. So I have soda here, as does Gerd's <laughs> best soda. Why is there different brands of soda? It's just, oh my god, it's just like... <laughs> oh, what is wrong with this? Why is it so angry? Have you awoken like a spirit? Oh, it doesn't want to be anywhere near Campari. <laughs> Neither do I. Right, okay. <laughs> like a lot. It doesn't look like a lot. Is but there really more to I go in it's it? Just like a, no, that's it. Oh. To garnish it with a wedge inside the drink. So there you go. <laughs> that, that is a quarter of an orange. <laughs> so there you go. Drink number one, that the looks, Americano. That looks nice. I don't like that. It's very, it's very like nothing. It tastes, <laughs> it tastes like the colour grey. I was going to say it's like a black hole of nothing. <laughs> like yeah, nothing. that's actually astounding. 
I didn't know you could remove the flavour <laughs> of orange. I'm having a hard time actually, like, if someone said to me, what does this taste like? The colour grey. Right. Okay, it wasn't always called an Americano, it was uh, originally called a Milano Torino mm -hmm. because that is the two cities in it Italy where the two yes. ingredients are, Campari and uh, the sweet vermouth. Got its name Americano because during Prohibition all the American tourists would come over and that would be one of their favourite orders so it became known as the Americano. We're now going to move on to, now this is a reach, this is a cocktail which has been shoehorned in here. Yeah. Because there's not many cocktails in the Roger movies and also in the, the, the books which are related to those movies. So, because The Spy Who Loved Me has a Russian spy and has a lot of Russian spies in it, we thought, why don't we do a Russian? A black okay. Russian and a white Russian. Ah. So that's what we're going to do. A black Russian and a white Russian and see what the difference is. Yeah, well, I'd say different. So this is a black and a white Russian. The reason for this is the fact that we have a lot of Russian spies in the Roger movies yep. and the books as well. So we thought, why not? So as mentioned at the start, we have a lot of drinks companies involved with this episode, which we are very, very grateful. One of which is this company here, Arbeke, who are based in Arbroath, who have three rather remarkable vodkas. Mm. White and the Black Russian, we are going to be using this one, which is the Har vodka. But just for a bit of fun, Jack's going to try all three now for the first time. I've tried them. This one is going to be coming back later on in the episode for a very, very specific cocktail that they actually designed and put together themselves. As part of the deal with this kind of partnership, they are actually offering you 10% off. So if you go to their website and you choose a vodka or a gin or a whiskey and you put in the code ARBECKE007, you will get 10% off. Which one do you want to try first? This no. is, and this is for essentially the viewers, this is made with wheat, this is made with potatoes, mm -hmm. and this is made with peas, which does have a unique story, which we'll get on to. So this, this actually is my favourite. Okay, um, that's the har. Yes, this is har, this is made with wheat. Very like French vodkas. Gorgeous. Okay. or things like that. Okay. My vodkas that I like. Okay. And it's very, very easy to drink. Um, every single vodka is 43%. That is easy to drink. It's very easy to drink. What do you what do you taste straight away for that? Sweet. Yeah. Caramelly. Caramel. That's exactly what I thought. So this one, I'm intrigued to see what you think about this, this one. This is a potato one, so that sounds to me more traditional. This is called a tatty bogle. And a tatty bogle is actually the name for a scarecrow that guarded potatoes. I believe it is the first vodka they made. Because they are a farm. And that's one of the the, the actual interesting stories about this distillery is a lot of distilleries will be a distillery first and foremost and they get their raw ingredients in and they, they make them into an alcohol and then they sell them. So the interesting thing about Arbeke is it's a farm first. From the seed in the ground to then this coming out here, they do everything. Yeah. What do you think? Oh about? wow, that is completely different. I, th I, I think it's, it's earthly. Uh -huh. Earthly or vegetably? Mm. It's, the, o it's the opposite very, very of that, the other one. So the hard yeah. really sweet. This is not, it's not sour and like that. It's just very, I don't know, savoury. Yeah, no, that's great actually, I like that one. Field to bottle, that's a good phrase yeah. for it. And the final one we're going to go on to is this one. This is the world's first climate positive spirit. Uh, we base our base spirit from the humble pea. This clever crop needs no nitrogen fertiliser. It's that's never cool. been done before. This is the very first one. Years. I know exactly what that reminds me of. I think it's just, it smells, it smells like tequila. It doesn't taste full like tequila, but there's a definite tequila there. If you like French High vodka, end. or if you like your, your standard vodka, earthy, strong, yeah. sipping vodka, and this, I don't know, like tequila, but not the tequila that people know, not yeah. the tequila that people like, yeah, you don't like, need the, the, the lime and the salt and all that no, stuff. No, it's very, very that. easy to drink. Let's move on to the har okay. cocktail now for a white and a black Russian. So nice it's of not ice. like a shaking or a stirred thing, it's just ice in the glass. Use cream for the white Russian. Yes. Now, when I've ever had this out in a bar, it's always milk. Been just milk. Yeah, but no, that's the reason for double cream is a lot of places say, go big or go home. Mm. If you're going to add dairy, add cream. 
half an ounce means a half measure, really. And then what we're also going to add to this, as everyone knows, is Kahlua. Now, I've actually never tried Kahlua. I'm going to try one measure and just see what it's like, and if not... Why don't we try it, like, just on a... So this, this is a black Russian. Oh, I forgot to spin. It needs stirred. Yeah. Tears. Does it, don't you? Ugh. Ooh. Maybe not. It's more best, best more, more coffee. Yeah, it's <laughs> That's 50 mils Kahlua, 75 okay. mils vodka. Let's just try this. We're, gonna, we're experimenting. Experiment. We're, we're getting closer. Oh, still. Still a bit. Maybe equal parts? Maybe it should be equal. Equal parts? Yeah. Right, so does that taste a little bit better? I mean, you that's, e that's easy to drink, that's actually... Nah, yeah, I, actually can, that I can eat that. Sense. That's equal parts. So there you go, if you want to make a, a black or a white Russian, equal parts. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go for cream. Right, so we're going to so layer this. pouring this on the back of the spoon. Right, just so it's layered on top of the drink. Okay. Right. So, right. I don't know what, I don't know what to do with this now. Lick it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, so this is with the cream on top. It's got a lot of cream. I don't think it makes any difference to the flavour. Nah, that's better. You prefer that? Do you taste the cream? Is it because I gave you like a ton of yeah. cream? Yeah. Right. right, I'm going to use an actual spoon here. I'm just going to... Right. We're waiting for the thing is, we're getting, we're getting close. <laughs> that's nice. We're getting a bit closer. We're getting a bit closer now, so why don't we try it? A wee bit of cinnamon, because a wee bit of cinnamon doesn't hurt anyone. Is it smell, is it smell with cinnamon? Try a bit of nutmeg. See how it works. You know that makes poisonous? Nutmeg is poisonous, I didn't nutmeg know. Nutmeg is nutmeg is highly poisonous. Yeah. I love the smell of nutmeg. But it's nice so it's just like that's nice. Okay, so what we've learned is Good trial and error. Yeah. We need uh, equal parts vodka and colour. We need cream. Cream is nice, but the cream needs to be mixed in with it. Mixed in. I think that's nice and Cinnamon and nutmeg can be added to yes. to taste. But I would say definitely have yeah, that. Yeah, it is actually very nice. That's easy to drink. And it's also easy to drink with this. So again, thank you, Arbeki, for sending us this vodka. This was this is my favourite by far. <laughs> so that is the <laughs> the black and the white Russian. Yep. I enjoyed that. And now it is Jack's turn to entertain us with the next cocktail, which is I'm going to make for you a Sazerac. Ooh. Hello, this is the Sazerac. The Sazerac is from the film Live and Let It Die, which is Roger Moore's first film, yes? Yes. What I need from my lovely assistant <coughs> to make a Sazerac is my rye whiskey. Look at this. Now, this is cool. Unsponsored. Unsponsored. This is from the, the back of my bar at home. But this is wax sealed, so we haven't thought this through. We need to You've not opened this. unseal the wax. But through the magic of editing, what we'll do is I'll go... Okay, so we open our bottle of rye whiskey, which has been... That took no time at all. The first thing you put in the glass is absinthe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so Derek provided us with absinthe. Right, so this, this calls for 10 mils. How much is in this? I have no idea. This is one unit, it says. Are you lacing the glass or are you pouring it in? Oh, okay. Oh, that wasn't enough. What do you need from me? Next, I want my simple syrup. You want to say two per glass? I'd say two, yeah. Yeah, let's go for two because... Let's make it quite sweet. Oh, look how thick that is. Now, lovely assistant, I would like the bitters, the bitters. A specific type of bitters for this drink. It's not Angostura bitters. It has to be this specific brand. This Sazerac special bitters. I don't know the difference. I don't even know what a bitters is. All I know is that bitters is poisonous if you drink it all. Now, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I'm going to say what pe it, what does it smell like? P-E-Y shods. P shods. It says three dashes of bitters. I'm going to do that. One, two, three. That was good. Right, okay, so the bitters are in. <coughs> that's that's what makes it more of a Sazerac. Now, I'm interested to try this just because I've, I've not had rye for a while. I would like... Do you want ice? Ice and a lemon peel. So whilst my lovely assistant is getting me ice, I will peel said lemon. Right, okay, so I'm going to do the James Bondy thing, which is... Lemon. Here we go. I present to you the Sazerac. This smells to me like something I bought, which was a mistake at three in the morning when I should have went home when everyone else got a taxi. 
Oh, that's, that's right. That's right. That's, that's. I don't really know what the batter spring. I, I, again, I, I don't really know what that means. I don't know if it, what it would be like without that. <clears throat> See, bitters is another thing for me. It's like a sham. It's a fraud. You put three dashes of something in it, you're never going to taste it. So why have it? Yeah. Why have it in the first place? You alcohol industry are lying to us. But yeah, uh, so I don't understand why it needed to be this specific one, but it does seem to be that all Sazeracs have this. Its um, origins are from New Orleans, or New Orleans, Norlands, whatever you want to call it. It was called the oldest cocktail in America, purely because of that reason. Oops. And it's from New Orleans, and that's why this <coughs> is used, because it's also New Orleans. The Sazerac is New Orleans. Anthony Bourdain himself said that this should be the official cocktail of New Orleans. So cheers to you in New Orleans. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna give this a one out of five. One out of five. I don't like it. Yeah, I don't basically. see anything wrong with it. I just I'm, I'm just not really used to it. Well, Let's then. move on now from New Orleans and move across the pond to France. We need to make one for Moonraker. And we're going to do a Moonraker cocktail, and it is based on the French seventy five. The French 79, or as it was called, the French 75. We've changed that Bond because divided. it means nothing to do with the year it was made or anything like that. So French 75 is not 1975? No, nothing like that. Essentially, the, the drink was invented in the early 1900s. People drank it and they said it had a bit of a kick, like a 75 howitzer. That's, That's a it. gun. That's it, yes, yeah, it's an artillery gun. And that was it. We're going to change that because yeah. ultimately Moonraker was, came out in 1979 and the majority of the cast was from France because it was based in France. If you don't know that, then you should go back and watch our episode on Moonraker explaining why. So we need two flute glasses. Check. We need Prosecco. So what we need to bear with us is gin. This gin. Tyree gin. Tyree gin. Very generous enough to send us a bottle. Yeah. And tell us to get involved and we wanted to do a cocktail and this actually matched up perfectly. So they won the, the gold award in the Spirits Business Gin Masters 2022, which obviously was just last year. Oh, that's actually nice. Tastes that's like a every night a, out I've ever had. No, there's a very, like, I want to say sticky. You could actually sit and sip that. Really, really easy, actually. I'm, actually, I'm actually going to have another one. I'm just so yes, thank you very much for Tyree for sponsoring. Um, if you want to go and get your own, as I said, it's, Tyree it's, gin. it's, it's actually unbelievably easy to drink. I'm not even a big gin drinker. So, so this cocktail obviously requires gin. Uh, it also requires Prosecco, which we have. It requires some lemon juice. We do have lemon juice. I'm tempted to maybe try and squeeze our own lemon juice. Uh, it needs simple syrup and it needs a lemon peel. Half a syrup, mm -hmm. two of gin, half a measure of lemon juice, and then the rest is Prosecco. So I'm actually going to add this to the glass first it. of all, yeah. I'm going to use fresh, fresh lemon. Fresh lemon. Right, so we've got a half measure there. Right. That's fresh lemon juice. We don't know what we're doing, but yeah, neither do you. Real. Unless you are a barman and you're watching this and going, there's some famous YouTube bar people. What's that guy? Oh, do you know who's, do you know who's the best? Who's the best? Uh, Greg at How To Drink. But Is that the guy we, we watched make the... The forget me shot and the flaming mode. Yes. Uh, we need gin. So we've got the, the layers for coming through. So we the gin. gin. Just just because we're, we're going for from Prosecco on top of it as well. And we're also, we're adding lime. So, so you're topping this with, with Prosecco. Prosecco. It is cloudy and fizzy like space. Right? <laughs> you're reaching there. Just <laughs> <laughs> That's <how it's> <laughs> It's all right. Yeah, it's is that yeah, good? It's good. Oh, it'll do the full depth though, that's good. Right. And then I think this is going to be so unbelievably lemony. Sour. I've just do you know what it would have been good? See if you measured it out and, <laughs> and looked it up. <laughs> no, we don't do that here. This is what was the French 75. It's now called the French 79. And uh, cheers. I, I... Vive la France. Oh, that's the best yet. It just tastes like Prosecco. No. I think more Prosecco makes it better. You can't really taste the gin, which I don't really like. No. <clears throat> the syrup the does... Hero, the hero spirit lost in it. Uh, the syrup does nothing. The lemon... The, ironically, the lemon juice does nothing. I think you could douse another <laughs> half of that into it. So this is 75 mils of gin. <laughs> that's better. That is better. That is actually 100% better. 
A hundred percent. Because it kills the Prosecco. Oh, you both it ki- said. <coughs> it kills said. it kills the fizz of the Prosecco. So that so yeah, what we've learned today is if you're gonna make a French, let's call it a French 79, it has to be seventy five mils of Thai region. Seventy nine mils. Seventy nine. Seventy nine mils of Thai like Thai nothing region. less, nothing more. Seventy nine mils of Thai region, Thai region and then Prosecco. I would never know there's seventy five mils of gin in it. I think that's maybe what's dangerous about it. <laughs> maybe that's because we've had so many shots of alcohol before. Maybe, like, maybe, <laughs> maybe we are genuinely just screaming at the camera right now. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Tidy Gin, for an actual very nice product yeah, that's actually good. on its own. Now we're moving on to the last two cocktails, which we've left to be the most complicated of the night. I'm going to make you a drink that is called the Octopus. Right, so the octopus derives from this book, which is on the James Bond store website. It's the official cocktail book, Shaken Drinking with James Bond. They have a, a cocktail called the octopus, which we're going to recreate because we couldn't find a cocktail within the actual film, octopus or the short story. So this is the next best thing. It's an octopus, it's a rum based cocktail. Right, I'm looking for the hero spirit, which is this rum, the hero spirit. Okay, it's twice buried. Rum from Scotland. Aberdeen. Twice buried as Aberdeenshire. And I will tell you the ghostly story of Mary. Okay, Mary died and suddenly twice buried. You might guess what happens next. But by a bottle, because it's all on the bottle. The full story. Twice buried, spiced rum from Aberdeenshire. I'll go on the website. I'll go on the website. No, buy it. We've never tried it, never smelt it before. Lived once, twice buried, that's what Mary was. It's a very, it's a very nice ball. Right, do you want to try it? Okay. Cheers. Twice Cheers, buried. Merry Christmas. <sighs> okay. Not as heavy as a lot of rums. No. Do you know what I mean? It's not as sweet. It's very, very sharp. But then, it's quite good because loads of spirits will get lost. Do you think this is a pierced through kind of that, spirit? This cocktail has a lot to it. Yeah. I think this could work really, really well. I'm looking for 25ml per glass of Hero Spirit. It's all been mixed in the glass. In the recipe book it asks for Timorous Beastie. We don't have any Douglas Lang Timorous Beastie, but we do have a Highlands whiskey substitute. Right, we don't, right, that's, yeah. Right, okay, whiskey, Highland whiskey. Next, I want 30ml of Guinness per person. Salted caramel syrup, we need two tablespoons per person. Mm. Two tablespoons. <coughs> and he's giving me a teaspoon. <laughs> oh, I thought it was <laughs> Nutmeg is the garnish. Chancellor. Garnish. So I have ground nutmeg already. There's a reason we've made two and it's not just for one of each. It's pure. It's actually because I have an egg Wait, allergy. Right, right. You have to shake these. You have to shake the egg. They kind of just crack an egg in it. <laughs> To make the cocktail, measure it all, shake vigorously, then strain. Well, you can't just crack an egg in that. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the yolk is bobbing against my nose. I want 20 mils of coconut cream. Lopez cre- coconut cream, which apparently is the exact one that they want in the book. Bu- oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm fucking in a big. <laughs> this is the scream, the scream. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm going to use my thing. Oh, okay. he's. You're thinky. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, strain, strain said mixture that should have been in here in the first place into a glass, okay? Garnish with said nutmeg. Right. You want to put a full egg in. If you're not allergic to eggs, dump your egg in. It says shake vigorously, but I can't be bothered. If you would like to try twice buried, and if you put on the code TBRC 2023, then you'll essentially get free ship. Free ship. Four pound off, which is free shipping. Come and try the rum. I present to you now your octopusy. Yeah, actually not bad. That is thicker than that, as you would expect. 
That's I say. The flavour is no different. This had rum oh. and whiskey and Guinness and Guinness through it. And it can you it, taste the Guinness? No. I can't taste the coconut either. This is an end of <clears> night. <throat> this is your dessert cocktail. Instead of having an ice cream at your fancy dinner, you have this. And the last one we're going to end on, we went through all of Roger's films and for those who have paid attention, there's one we've missed off. And this is a cocktail which is actually made by the cocktail company. And it's called The Golden Gun. The final cocktail we're going to look at is called The Golden Gun which yes. is synonymous with the man with the golden gun. We're going to go on with a cocktail which was actually improvised. There was no cocktails in that movie, but there is a cocktail that was improvised by the Becky Distillery, as we've discussed already, through their Nadal Vodka at the James Bond convention they were involved the in the in the US back yeah. last year. So we're going to try and replicate that. We do need Nadar Vodka, which is the pea vodka we discussed before. If this you would like to get a bottle for yourself and try to see what it's like, you can use the code Arbeki007 at the basket and get 10% off. And this is the tequila-esque vodka, yes. which is the carbon positive pea one. We have some San Germain. Or Saint Germain. Or Saint have Germain, they might call it. Lime juice, and we also have... Amaretto. The amaretto is a bit of a substitute, as there is a certain liqueur which is almond-based. This will do, because it's the exact same thing, except it's alcoholic. And we could not find a very, very specific type of pineapple juice. However, we are from Glasgow, so we're going to go with Bar's Pineapple. What we're going to do, first of all, as we're going to fill the glass with ice. And we're going to go with the 50ml 50 50ml 50 vodka. There is actual measurements of which I've not written down. The Saint Germain, it is 15ml of Saint Germain. Okay. Not even a full measurement. This is lime. This lime is juice. Lime. Then we have the amaretto. And then we're looking for some Prosecco. Now, it asks for just a dash of Prosecco. When it says dash, Usually Prosecco is the uh, I think that's a If this show wasn't Scottish enough with its Scottish gin, its Scottish rum and its Scottish vodka, yeah. it's now the Scottish mixer because this is the biggest brand of Scotland. We've got the pineapple there. Yes. We're now looking for some mint. You clap the mint. You clap. smack it. Do so you get the, the oils out? And the oils out. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god, frightening man. Right, and there we go. And then that is what is that is what is called a golden gun. Right, cheers to you, our Becky. And Roger. Oh. It is just a pineapple. Is that my favourite so far? Yes. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna like stir that around. Is it better now that it's all mixed and it's not just layers? Aye. That's easy to drink. You could tan that. That's a good Scottish word. The mix of pineapple and mint is really, really nice. It's the, the, really nice. That's it's, like... It's the nose point of mint. The fact that it's got vodka, Saint Germain, and Amaretto. I genuinely think this, this drink could take 90 mils of all of those. What we're going to do is we're going to add... A measure more of each. See, let's, see. Try, let's try that. Let's, that's, that's a... This is oh, what that's, that's, that's it. That's this is it right what there. you make. That's it right there. That's better. That, this is your... House. You could generally, you could drink that all night. That's like, your house party like, cocktail. Scaramanga drink it. Fucking of course it would. Let's sum up the seven cocktails we've made this evening. Yeah, why would we rank them? Uh, before you make your decision, I'll put the last one here. So the last one was a golden gun. Do you prefer that? Which is here. And I want to see where would Derek rank it and then uh, as all the episodes, I will move one. Right, so my five to one would be in fifth position. The Sazerac. Then I would have this thing. And then I would have a white Russian before it has an octopus. I would have that second and I would have the Americano first. Whoa. For me, Americano dead last just because I didn't like, I, I, I didn't have any flavour. Sazerac here, just because it was alright but it was quite hard to drink. The Russian here. And then the Golden Gun is up here. But yeah, thank you very much for all the, the companies that got involved. So we've got Arbeke, we've got Twice Buried Rum Company, and we Tyree have Tyree Gin. Gin. That is to wrap up the second 
for Eurozone special and actually the last episode of 2023. Thank you very much for joining us. We will see you in 2024. Peace out.